Okay, our next presenter is David Scott, here from Edinburgh, here to talk about uh, TPLS, a freely available program for the simulation of two-phase two -phase flow. Please welcome David. Right, uh, I'd like to uh, talk about some work that's been going on for a number of years now, uh, particularly the third phase of it. Uh, the uh, principal drivers for this work are Lennon O'Narai, Narai from uh, Dublin, and uh, Prashant Baluri from Edinburgh, a DevOps engineer. So we have a mathematician and engineer, and I'm the uh, software engineering component of this. Um, <coughs> As I say, it's been under development for a number of years and there have been quite a few contributors. Uh, these are the people who contributed to the uh, publicly available code. There are other contributors to the code which is not yet been made publicly available. <coughs> for instance, there's been work being done on evaporating droplets, but we haven't merged that yet. But I'll come to that later. So it's funded by uh, the EPS, uh, EPSRC, which is the UK funding body, through uh, the Embedded Computational Science and Engineering Programme funds me. Um, <clears throat> so, and uh, we use, of course, we use Petsy, which is why I'm here. Uh, so, the first public release was in 2013. Um, code had been under development for some time before that. Uh, it was just, there was no Petsy component to it at all. It used uh, hand-coded Jacobi saw uh, solvers for everything, essentially. Uh, and the first thing that we did, which I was involved in, was uh, writing a Pepsi version of the pressure solver, which was the most computationally expensive part of the code at the time. Um, it was a 2D, 3D code, but with just a 2D composition, decomposition, domain decomposition, and with uh, serial I.O. Um, and then uh, there was a second release in 2015, which, uh, in which um, parallel I.O. was introduced through that CDF, uh, and uh, there was also some, a lot of refactoring of the code to uh, allow it to be configured uh, at runtime, rather than having to change the size of the domain by recompilation, things like that. I wasn't involved in that particular uh, version. And then again, uh, there was a third version in 2017 where uh, through the use of PETSI, we uh, introduced a 3D, 3D domain decomposition. Um, we uh, introduced PETSI solvers for the uh, momentum equations as well, and also incorporated code to allow the fluids to have different densities. Uh, it's available from SourceForge under a BSD style license. Um, I'll say what we're trying to do uh, is steadily draw together the standalone codes that we have uh, consolidated into a single code base and that's uh, you know, prove the usability and sustainability of the code that we have. Um, so the two, there are two types of uh, simulation you can do with TPLS. Uh, one is uh, you can do uh, uh, simulate the Rayleigh Taylor instability, which I, I realize is just a one-off thing, but that's quite important for uh, validating code and then you, then you can do uh, um, mathematical analysis to check that the uh, numerical results that you're getting out are, are actually correct. Uh, and we can do stably stratified parallel two-phase flows. Um, so we're having to do quite to uh, uh, resolve the uh, simulation. It, it involves quite a few different length scales uh, and time scales. And uh, with sharp changes at the interface <coughs> that you'll see uh, in, uh, when I present some uh, output. Uh, and so we're having to do uh, reasonably long simulations. I wouldn't say they're huge enough, not in comparison with what we just heard anyway. Uh, um, and so it's important that we, we have scalable code that, uh, that can be run at high resolutions in a reasonable length of time. Um, so it's, we're doing uh, two-phase incompressible inco Navier Stokes uh, with interface capturing. So we have this uh, Interface capturing field phi. Uh, we, I'm talking about the um, level set version of the code, where uh, phi, uh, where the interface is phi is zero. <laughs> um, 
So the, uh, you can see there there's a FST, which is a surface tension term, and uh, you have uh, the delta epsilon, which is, um, it's a bit like a delta function. It's something which uh, is non-zero only uh, in the region of where phi equals zero. So that's defining the uh, <coughs> interface for you with uh, epsilon being the width, a measure of the width. So, um, doing marker and cell discretization, um, the scalar fields are at the centers of the cells and the vector fields are on the faces. Um, using finite one as if flux conservative differencing from the momentum equation. Right, again, uh, we've got the center differences for the convective derivative, crank Nicholson treatment for diffusion, and third order Adams bash for the time evolution. Um, the momentum are updated first, followed by a correction step, including a pressure update. Uh, and the level set function is uh, carried with the flow using a fifth order we know. Um, uh, we're corrected at each time step using redistancing, which you need to do to uh, preserve, preserve mass. All right, so the way they tell you instability in that's going to, so where you have. Um, Two fluids set up with the uh, denser fluid above the less dense fluid. Um, it's, uh, you have to introduce a perturbation at the interface in order to get things started, but it's an unstable situation. So the heavy fluid accelerates down through the uh, less dense fluid. Uh, and this particular simulation was done with the uh, denser fluid being three times as dense as the less dense one. And here you can see uh, the instability developing over time. That's a, that's a, that's a classic thing in uh, fluid dynamics. Uh, so you can do two phase. Um, so you can do stratified flows. So here it's set up with the um, less dense fluid on the top. Uh, and uh, it's, it's pressure driven and uh, as you can see, you can get quite complicated surfaces developing over time. Um, so how do you set up the program? Well, there are three aspects to that. First of all, there's generating the uh, initial state. Um, this is done from a configuration file using the, uh, uh, a special program just to generate the initial state. Then you can configure how uh, the program works at runtimes using non-PETSI options. Uh, you'll notice that I'm not doing some of the things that should be done. They will be done eventually, uh, introducing more features of PETSI. Uh, and then um, there's the PETSI runtime configuration. So the initial uh, configuration for generating the uh, initial state, I mean, you've set up in the domain size you're saying well, what interface detection method you want to use. We have code for uh, the diffuse interface method, but I'm not talking about that because it's not fully tested. Um, then uh, currently we have just the uh, really Taylor instability or channel flow. And then there's the usual things you'd expect, the Reynolds or the densities and viscosities. And so the initial height of the interface uh, set to being halfway up here. The, uh, Vertical dimension has been scaled, so it runs from zero to one. Uh, pressure gradient gravity, which is acting downwards here. That's something we can't, uh, the channel has to be uh, horizontal at the moment. I mean, another thing we'd like to do is actually uh, let it uh, be on an incline. That, what's not a difficult change, hasn't been done yet. Um, Right, and then at runtime you can choose a number of processes. Again, we're still working on uh, using the full power of PETSI, and for various reasons, uh, we still have the constraint that the number of processes has to be a divisor of the <coughs> domain size. The code has been written so that, well, we have uh, versions of the um, Jacobi source solvers which have been rewritten really just. They use the same algorithm, but we're just using data, uh, PETSI data structures. 
you can uh, choose at runtime whether you want to use a curl off solver or one of these old solvers. Uh, this is useful for uh, uh, when we're doing, trying to uh, look at performance of the code and also uh, for the idea that uh, the people I'm dealing with will be happier to write their code initially using the old style Jacobi sort approach and, uh, and then somebody can help them later to, to uh, introduce uh, Krilov's holders. Um, and we can turn uh, this is a monitoring flag. So, I mean, obviously, you have to be, uh, for the Petsy part, you can use the Petsy monitoring. But we, uh, what I've done is, um, if you choose monitoring for the Jacobi soil solvers, then you can uh, it will actually construct the matrix that would be used by the Krilov <coughs> solver and use that to com uh, compute a, a true residual, which otherwise you can't get out of that code. Which obviously is, helps in comparing comparing them because they the actual. There is no convergence criterion for the Jacobi source solvers. They're just uh, told to work for a certain number of times uh, of, of iterations for each, at each time step. So uh, it's actually uh, quite difficult to uh, reproduce exactly the behaviour and using the two different types of solvers. Um, as I've mentioned yesterday, you can. Uh, configure the different solvers separately by using prefixes. Pretty obvious uh, what's going on there, I think. Um, now I'm going to give you some performance figures which are not very satisfactory because for various reasons I ran out of time. The uh, success criteria for the project were not ones I would have chosen. And thirdly, uh, the uh, development has been done on the Archer, which is a Cray XC30 system. and. Uh, Run times are really quite variable, so it actually you have to spend a lot of time uh, really to generate uh, reliable uh, execution times for the codes. Um, so the introduction of the uh, 3D decomposition made a, a very big difference to the performance of the code, uh, even on this small problem on 64 nodes to a factor of two speed up, which is pretty remarkable considering the fact that the uh, that uh, size, uh, uh, number of nodes, the um, parallel efficiency is poor. Uh, you just go to the domain, just isn't big enough. Um, how am I doing for time? Still have a good five minutes or so. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> if we, when you include the effect of uh, introducing density contrast, uh, it means that the computations take approximately twice as long. Um, so that uh, that combined with the uh, increase in domain size means that uh, that the uh, parallel efficiency on 64 nodes is pushed up as you would expect because um, you're doing more computation. It's more in, uh, doing more in relation to the amount of communication that's going on, and uh, also you have more domain points per MPI process. Um, let's play it. I'm not entirely happy about the. <coughs> I'm going to make some wishy washy statements because I'm a little uncertain about going here. It seems that the momentum solvers uh, run, uh, Krill versions of the momentum solvers actually do not perform as well as the hand coded Jacobi saw solvers, uh, whereas the pressure computation is better, is, is quicker. Um, the problem, it seems to be, that the construction of the matrix is expensive. So once, once you've constructed the matrix, the uh, Krill solvers actually uh, converge rapidly. It's just that you spend, <coughs> you may, uh, for a momentum equation, you may spend as long constructing the matrix as actually performing the solver. Um, so what are we going to do in the future? Well, we're going to uh, merge some existing code on countercurrent flows, and uh, you saw right in the beginning actually there was a, an image of a droplet, so there's some code to do with uh, droplet uh, physics of droplets as well, which can be uh, included. Longer term plans are to include heat transfer, and mass transfer, uh, and there's an um, even longer term aim, I would say, to implement complex geometries rather than just channels. Um, 
So that's all I have to say for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Any questions for David? Yes. 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 I can't answer that straight away, but I do have some figures I could dig out. Okay, that would right. be cool. Other questions? So I, I've noticed um, the code supports uh, viscosity contrast. Have you done any experiments uh, with that to see how the solvers perform in that case? I personally haven't. Uh, Mike, um, so no, I don't have any information on that. But there, uh, I mean, there's a difference between what's been done with the publicly released code and what has been done with all of the things that we're uh, assembling it from. There is a lot more work being done than I've been involved with, because there, there are, you know, uh, currently I think there are four PhD students involved in developing things in the same sort of framework. But my uh, role in this really is to uh, encourage people to actually develop these inside a, uh, uh, a single code base so that it's all integrated and easily available uh, and can be passed down from uh, one person to the next as time goes on. So I'm sorry, I'm not the best person. What I'm saying is I'm not the best person to ask about uh, exactly what's been done in okay. terms of... Uh, Thank you, David.